on the line, Mr. Albert Nyati. You may remember him from Senzenina. He is currently the chairperson of the board at Zimura, and he's he's the person who's who's pulling a lot of the strings. So uh, he's also with Polisile Ngube Chimini, uh, the CEO or the executive director there at Zimura. Um, and between the two of them, they can answer all our questions that we have um, about uh, the latest things that we've seen regarding the uh, the, um, the rates and so on. So thank you very much for for being with us, uh, Mr. Nyati. Thank you very much also for being with us, um, Polisile. Can we can we just call you both by your first names? Yes, yeah, yes. Sure. Mm. Ah, all excellent. protocol observed, of course. All protocol yeah, yeah. Observed. You know, we are we are very serious here. Um, so first of all, uh, just earlier, we had a brief conversation where you explained that most artists don't seem to understand the function of Zimura and that it is not about the artists, it's more about the composers. Maybe you could just start off by briefly outlining that so that we can then lay a groundwork for our questions. Yeah, when we talk of um, composers, we are talking of the people who write uh, music, the lyricists, and the producers and the publishers. Mm -hmm. But when you talk of musicians, it includes um, those who own what are called neighboring rights, rights which are related to copyright. These include the guitarists, the backing vocalists, the bassists, the dancers, all those guys who don't write music, but who assist the composers to bring the music to the people. Okay. Thank you. So we are mostly talking about the composers and not necessarily the singers or the artists. Yes, we are talking of uh, the composers or the authors of music. Sure. In many cases, it, it, they are the same person, but oftentimes they are not as well, correct? Yeah. In Zimbabwe, uh, most of them are the same person. Uh, you find that Oliver Mtukudzi would write his own music and sing his own music. So he's both a composer, stroke author, and as well as a performer. But if you look at somebody who was popular like Brenda Farsi, Brenda Farsi would write, would uh, hardly write songs, but he would perform a lot of songs uh, that were written by other people. Mm -hmm. So she was literally a performer and not a songwriter, but she was popular for singing. So for us, if uh, the person does not write songs, but just sings, then they are just a performer and they are not an author. So Zimura, is for authors, composers, producers, and publishers, and not um, for mere singers or performers. Yes. Okay. I, I, I hope you understand that. In many parts of the world, um, the job of a songwriter is just that, songwriting. They sit, you may not even know them. You may not necessarily know them. Uh, their music may be known, fronted by a singer, a good singer, Say, you know, Michael Jackson or, or whoever, however big they are, they are Thomas. But somebody is writing, their business is to write, and they mm. earn money through mm. writing. And they are seated at home, nobody knows their name, their mm. craft is to write. Word, word, word. <laughs> okay, so now that we've established uh, the songwriters and your guys' role, let's say I am an artist, I am a composer. I approach Zimura, I'm like, I have produced works. I come with my split sheets. I come with proof of public performance and the like. And I would like to collect royalties for those works and the public performance. What is the procedure as outlined by Zimura for me to start receiving uh, publishing royalties? If you want to join Zimura as a member so that you can uh, benefit from other membership benefits that we offer to our members, you have to join uh, guided by the membership uh, requirements that we have. If you just want to collect your royalties uh, without being a member, you, you can still collect your royalties because um, we are guided by the principle that we license broadcasters and we give them a blanket license mm -hmm. for all the music that they perform. And uh, at the same time, we give them an indemnity for third party claims, meaning uh, they shouldn't have individual composers walking into their stations asking for their royalties. So even if you are not a member of Zimora, but you, we have evidence that your works have been used, you can collect royalties. So but if you want to join as a member, you have to adhere to the membership requirements first. Okay. 
So let's say I've done that. I've paid my membership dues. I've been an active member. And I now come to you at the end of a period. And I'm like, for this year, I don't know all the plays I've received, but I have evidence for some. And I've got all the documentation to prove that I am indeed uh, a, a composer on these works that have been played publicly. What is the procedure then? Um, how do you calculate payouts and how are payouts administered? Okay, just to correct what you said in the beginning that you've paid your membership dues. Mm -hmm. Members don't pay anything. You just pay uh. membership registration fees. Uh, these fees, we use them to uh, facilitate the paperwork that you use when you're joining the membership registration sheets, yeah. the deed of assignment, the registration form, and then we give you an ID at the end of the day and the membership certificate. So the money that you pay uh, in the beginning is just for registration. Once you are registered, you don't need anything anymore, but you okay. then benefit from the membership benefits that we have. So if uh, it's time for distribution and there is proof that your works were used, you don't have to prove it yourself, but mm -hmm. we use the log sheets that we receive from the radio stations, like from ZBC, ZFM, Star FM, all the radio stations that we have contracts with. They have to give us log sheets of all the music that they use 24-7 from January to December. So if we are distributing for a certain period, we we'll look at the log sheets and look at whose uh, works appear on the log sheets, and all our distributions rely on those uh, log sheets unless they are mechanical rights distributions which are completely different and those we also receive log sheets from our sister society that collects for us in south africa that is uh, capaso it will also come with uh, a list of who's due for royalties and that's how we distribute the royalties okay Okay, so just to just to bring it down to a, a little bit less of a technical discussion, um, especially since we saw this week the the documents that were going around about the change in tariffs, and uh, first of all, uh, you are you are now proposing. I don't know if it's been approved, but you're proposing to charge in U.S. dollars. Yes, uh, the tariffs have been approved by okay. the Minister of Justice. We are proposing to charge in US dollars, just like any other business in Zimbabwe is doing at the mm. moment. We live in the same uh, space where other businesses live in, and um, at the moment, the US dollar is uh, being used uh, parallel to the Zim dollar, and we accept both. If you come with the US dollar, we accept. If you want to pay in Zim dollar, we accept. But the U.S. dollar tariff is just a basis for ah. our fees. And if you look at it properly, it's the same tariff that we're using in 2018 when, we're, when the U.S. dollar was one is to one with the Zim dollar. And we just brought it, it back new. because the U.S. dollar is back in the economy and we cannot ignore it. What about so, the payouts? Are, they going to be, are the payouts going to U.S. dollars? Some are paying in U.S. dollars and some are paying in Zim dollars. And if next year in June when it's distribution time, U.S. dollars are still leak or tender, we are also going to be able to distribute in U.S. dollars. Okay. Okay. Um, so to, to go back to that document, um, are you able to provide some explanation as to what methods were used to determine what establishments pay what fee for these blanket licenses? Um, it's uh, one of the que queries I would have is you have banks who are asked to pay a $500 blanket fee, but bars whose primary source of revenue is directly reliant on that music are paying far less than that. It's from 150 to 200 for a nightclub. Could you please explain that disparity? It's unfortunate I don't have the tariff in, uh, in front of me, mm -hmm. but tariffs are developed over time. With tariffs, you cannot reinvent the wheel. You can only amend and change things to suit you. Uh, what I can tell you is um, the tariffs differ for the different establishments. And most of the time, it depends on the space in terms of square meters of the establishment. If it's a bank, and it's 100 square meters, their tariff is going to be dependent on that. If it's a nightclub and it, uh, only 50 people can fit in that nightclub, the tariff is going to be dependent on that. You also notice that it's not all nightclubs that share the same tariff. 
the tariff depends on how big the nightclub is, how many employees it has, what capacity of um, clients it can have at any given stage. Like if you look at a restaurant, it's unfortunate we are talking during the COVID era where restaurants have to only take 50% sitting capacity so to speak but when they've um, when it's normal times and they can have their full sitting capacity we'll be looking at the sitting capacity in terms of how many uh, chairs are in the restaurant so tariffs are developed differently and they are different they are never the same okay um so one of the common questions we've received from artists is for places where there are public performances of music like bars and nightclubs is zimura physically requesting play sheets from these establishments so they can ascertain how to distribute uh, the royalties or are you just distributing on a pro rata basis yeah we actually use a pro rata uh, basis uh this was worked long time uh in the monies that are received from um, unmonitored areas like the bars and the nightclubs we are talking about is worked as a coefficient of what we receive from the broadcasters who actually give us proof of what they, they've used. So uh, how this works, it's, it's very technical. Um, it, it, um, it says if one is played, say, five times by a broadcaster, it will be assumed that the person was played once or twice in a nightclub so for every five times that you receive from the broadcaster you're going to receive uh, one uh, point for the unmonitored places and that is called the general distribution and when we distribute there will be a column for broadcasting there will be a column for general and in the event that we've um, received royalties for live performances like say uh, Albert Nyat is playing live at Bulawayo uh, Rainbow Hotel there will be a different column for those um, live performances. Okay. I think what's of interest to us, uh, because we're directly affected, is uh, the establishment of podcasts having to pay blanket licenses. How was this assigned and how do you mo- plan to monitor it? And can we have um, leniency to not pay because we spoke to you? With the broadcasters, we literally negotiate. Uh, you will notice that broadcasters pay different tariffs as well. Some pay a percentage of their revenue, some pay a percentage of their advertising revenue, some pay per play. It depends on the people that we negotiate with in a radio station and how they want to pay uh, what they think is good for them and what we also think is good for us. Okay. Like, I think you would understand that we have to meet uh, halfway. It has to be a win-win situation. Okay. So if uh, it's okay for us, for a broadcaster to pay per play, we allow them to pay play. If uh, if it's not okay and they should pay a percentage, then we agree that they pay a percentage. Oh, but a- a- for a- all actually, the broadcasters... Sorry, just to, just to interrupt, um, we're just worried about um, my airtime in Opera. We were talking about specifically webcasting, podcasting, and internet service providers. Um, you have a tariff there that sits at 20 US cents per viewer or listener per annum. So, for example... Oh, okay. We, well, I, yes. I'd miss the, the webcasting part. Yes, we are, we are a podcast and we are... We are how do we apply for... Um, um, immunity from that it's an issue of tariffs as well we go back to tariff development we do not um generate our own tariffs we rely on uh, other societies that have had tariffs before us like for the webcasting tariff we adopted a tariff from uh, south africa and then we um, applied to the local situation in terms of the currencies that we use in zimbabwe but how how do so for example we are a podcast and um occasionally we do play music how are we going to then pay you because i mean uh, do we have to come in for a meeting and sign a contract or are you monitoring us or um i i think i think we are in the process of getting into a contract with you guys because um i'm not the person who do the contract per se my okay. deputy director does that, so I'm not mm-hmm. quite sure at what stage we are with you in sure. terms of um, coming up with a contract for that sort of service. 
Sure. Okay. No problem. And then just a couple of quick questions as well. Um, I think there's a, there's a few misconceptions about how things work. So for example, if I am one of these establishments and I decide that I'm not going to play any Zimbabwean music, I'm only going to play international music. So I don't have to pay Zimura. Is that possible? <laughs> You are in trouble, my friend. <laughs> the same thing. As a collecting society, we sign what are called reciprocal agreements with other societies all over mm. the world. Mm. And how these reciprocal agreements work is such that we are going to protect uh, Lucky Dube, Rebecca Malope, uh, in mm. the same manner that we protect Jesus. Alec Macheso, Suleiman Timbetu, and Lena Tiem in Zimbabwe. Mm. And they are going to do the same on their side of the border they are going to protect our Zimbabwean artists in the manner that we protect theirs this side so whether you want to play uh, music which does not uh, belong to Zimbabweans you still have to pay for copyright fees okay. yeah, let me tell you something my friend mm -hmm. if we apply for a, a court uh, interdict that a broadcaster or a particular broadcaster shouldn't play music we are not talking about music from Zimbabwe necessarily we are talking about music globally because that, as she has indicated, there are reciprocal uh, arrangements or agreements. Okay. If you, you can't play Bob Marley, you can't play Michael Jackson, you can't play Beyonce. That music is protected by Zimura. Beyonce. Right in, but <laughs> as much as um, it is Maravini or Madaiva now, Tukus music is protected in, in, in the UK by PRS or in South Africa by um by um some and so on and so forth so this what we are doing as the mura is not new this is a global um practice okay no we understand uh, it's just you know the um, frequently asked questions another one if i am throwing a wedding and i hire a dj to come and play music at my wedding does that mean i have to pay zimura yes um uh... yes and no if you hire a hall which is already licensed with Zimura, then you don't have to pay anything because the hall is already licensed. If you hire a DJ who already has a copyright license, then you don't have to pay because the DJ is already licensed. But if you hire a hall which does not have a license and you are going to play music, then you are going to have to take a special license for your function on that day. If you are going to use a DJ who does not have a license, then you are going to have to pay. So there was also a lot of concern that people were, were seeing that uh, everyone who has a phone or a device that can play music is also going to have to pay a tariff. Is that true? For uh, I read that for ZBC, mm. not for us. Okay. For us, copyright applies in business premises. Okay. That's why you find that we don't go to people's homes to ask them to take a copyright license, even if they have a television or a radio. So as long as it's a personal uh, gadget for us, we will not follow anybody. Mm. You see, when you buy uh, music for your family, you buy music for private use at home, that's fine. But if you are going to use it publicly to enhance your business, it is then that we have to share. It is then that you have to pay. That is, the, the, you know, the understanding so globally. So works in commercial uh, spaces only. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I think the last thing that I, I think we wanted to say is that uh, since we are we are doing such a good job of of putting this information out there in the public sphere, yeah, I think Zimura can also particularly for our product, you know, our podcast, this one that we found you on. Uh, I think you can also just, you know, remove us from any any liability to pay tariffs. I think I, I don't know. I don't know if that's something you'd be open to. Mm. <laughs> no, uh, we, can we can't. If you are broadcasting and you use music, you've got to pay for copyright. No, it's fine. We'll talk of it. No, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. We'll discuss. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk of it. Don't <laughs> we, we'll discuss afterwards. Don't worry. It's a... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, you know what? Thank you. You know, you, you really ask pertinent questions. And I think that uh, most of the misconceptions have been cleared. Um, mm -hmm. What I wanted to say is that we, we are very worried uh, because we see a lot of people who know nothing about collecting societies, writing lots of stuff uh, that they don't understand and in the process trying to confuse our clients and trying to confuse mm. even just the general public. And that is very wrong. Mm. There are lots of bloggers who just keep on blogging uh, wrong information and that is not right. The Mura is the, from my knowledge, in Zimbabwe, is the only collecting society in, uh, and paying royalties uh, to um, um, copyright owners 
copyright holders, right? Mm. Um, in the book industry, in the film industry, in dance and theater, there is nothing. So we are surprised uh, that you then get people who know nothing, uh, mm. uh, uh, keeping on writing stuff wrongly and not consulting. We are very happy that you consulted us and we spoke and you are, we are explaining what we are all about. Thank you. Thank that, you. Uh, this is called intellectual property. It's mm -hmm. property. It's my, you know, my Cheso song or, or Sandra's song, Sandra Ndebele's song, is, mm -hmm. his, is his or her property. Mm -hmm. It's like a cow, only that you, you don't, like, we are not Tinama musicians, we are not farmers, we are not, we are not uh, miners, we are not uh, doctors. Our business is in music, mm -hmm. is in mm -hmm. art. And yeah. we must benefit from it. We, we also hate the bloggers here. They are, mm. yeah. <laughs> they are, yeah. So, so thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Albert Nyati, the chairperson of the board at Zimura, as well as Polisile Nube Chimini, the uh, executive director at uh, Zimura. Thank you so much for clearing these things up for us. Thank you. Thanks to you. We, we'll, we'll see you in court. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>